I don't want to get this stuff too wet because it's going to get cold tonight. And I'd like for this stuff to set up pretty quick. But yet I don't want to just pour it in there bone dry. But hopefully I guess right. If you pour it in concrete and you don't have a vibrator, you can use a reciprocating saw. I'll take the blade out of it. I'll lay it up against it here and you can watch that concrete. That'll prevent you from having any voids on the sides. And it settles that concrete down in there nicely. Well, I can't find my concrete trowel, so I guess a grout float will have to do. Got it poured, it's a little wet, so I'll let it set up for a little bit. Then I'll come back and try to slick it up a little bit, but we'll move on to number two and three. Try to get this wrapped up. All right, I got all three of those poured. It's a little wetter than I want it to be, but I'll let it set up here for a little bit, and then I'll try to slick the tops up. But while I'm waiting, I'm running out of daylight, and I got quite a bit to get done before we get a big rainstorm that they're calling for tonight so i want to go ahead and try to get this place all my utilities in and get all the digging done that i need to do so i can start getting some gravel and backfill and get everything slicked up so propane tank i buried one the thousand gallon tank it's been a couple months ago but i've got to run my gas line over to my regulator there and if you want to hear the last video I have a airline stubbed up inside the corner of the garage and so it comes out a conduit here and I'm going to run it over into this building to where I've got an electric run on the outside of the sh what will be the shop area it's to an air compressor that way we can use the same compressor and have air inside this garage so I'm running just a half inch PEX and then I've got some inch and a half PVC that I'll run it through as a conduit. I rented a little ditch witch, so hopefully that'll make it go a little quicker. Back in the rock. Well, if you've not been with me since the beginning, this building here is what you would call built on the rock. I mean, it's solid slate through there everywhere. So I started hitting it about right in here, which just doesn't need to be that deep, but I wanted it a little deeper here through my road, but I'm not gonna sit and wrestle with it. It's probably gonna be six inches below the road. I'll put it in conduit, and then I had to snake it in here. There's a water line and some uh, cable stuff coming in here. So I kind of kept it out and then brought it back over there to where my air compressor will be so i'll clean the bottom of it out straighten it up a little bit put some conduit and pipe in there and then we'll move on to the gas line all right conduit and air line are in got the ditch covered back up i'm going to run the tractor over this and try to pack it down some and then I'll bring some gravel back in here and spread it on top of this. Keep us out of the mud. All right, next on the agenda is I'm going to run the gas line over to the corner of the garage. They've got it in a piece of conduit out about four feet outside of their housing here where the gauge and everything is. So I'm going to slip it and conduit as well just for safe measures. Let's get to digging. Well, the weatherman didn't lie. 
But I got this ditch filled back up last night and I put some rock on it, which we got quite a bit of rain. But I took a vehicle and run over it trying to pack that ditch back in to go ahead and get it to settle what it's going to settle. So I've got some final grade work to do in here. I've got everything elevated from the house and this building is elevated. So we got the water coming out here. But when we cut this slab in, I just cut it dead level in here, which I knew I'd have to come back. I cut just a little swell in it, but everything settled out. So I just ponded up right through this little valley. So once I get all these lines and get all this material moved out of the way, this is about the last of the water. I'll cut a little swell through here and we'll get the water to run that way. And from about right here, we'll take it that way. And we should eliminate our water problems. And then back here in this corner, when I get these trusses moved, I'll be able to take that water off the edge and we'll get rid of our water. My concrete wasn't set up for me last night so I could finish the top. So I was busy putting these ditches in, getting everything else done, so I just covered it up with plastic. Try to hold a little of that heat in so it wouldn't freeze on top, but I figured I'd just go with the plastic stamp natural look. So we'll see what it turned out like. Well, not the greatest, but hey, most of this will get covered with a plate where that post will mount. And then I'm gonna leave my form zone until this dries out. And then I will go ahead and put my layout marks on my post. So everything, I know where to set those at. So I'll let it dry and we'll mark it out. Then we can pull them off and we'll check and see how our little chamfers did around the corner. I got my gas line put in and stubbed out over here where my meter's at. Put my little board in here to keep that mud from washing down over the end of the pipe to where we can tie onto that. But I went ahead and backfilled it and sort of tried to run the tractor over and pack it down. I've still got to bring that elevation up out there around the tank. But that's in, so once we get all this stuff moved, we'll be able to grade this and get something finished. I'll show you our sheetrock progress. If you want to catch these boys on camera, you better be ready with your camera because they move on pretty quick. It took them three days to get everything hung. Four guys came the first day and then second day there was two guys and then two guys come back and finished it the third day. But I didn't even realize that the mudders were coming or the fillers rather, but four of them come and they got a first coat, got a tape coat on everything in the house so far. So. They're moving right along. Now I'm gonna put a wood ceiling in here in the living room over to the kitchen. And then where you don't see sheetrock there, I'm gonna put wood on the wall and we'll use that as sort of a backsplash for the cabinets. So I'll bring it from this corner around and then I'll stop it with a trim piece over here to where the about six inches beyond the cabinets. But this ceiling, I went ahead and put some plastic up. I kind of debated it. But for now, I need to keep that cool draft from out of the attic from coming down in here to try to keep it a little bit warmer in here. But when I put that tongue and groove ceiling up, I wanted a little barrier there beyond it to where it sort of help us from an air barrier. And that'll get our 38 insulation on top. So I shouldn't have any problem with condensation on warm air down here cold air up there i think we'll get it sealed off well enough to where we shouldn't have any issue with that but i've got some wood to put up on this ceiling and four or five walls throughout the house moving back outside metal fabricator he said he's about two weeks out getting me the rest of my headers and then my post for the shed back there and then we'll be able to get this buttoned up and then we'll be ready to put wood on this thing. Well, I thought I had somebody lined up to build the porch for me once I get the steel structure up. I'm gonna use four by six beams for my joist and then I'll use a tongue and groove inch and a half material for my roof deck and that'll create a ceiling from the underside. And then he gave me a price and I just can't justify paying that price. The man's his own man, so he can charge whatever he wants to charge. But I don't know if it's just me, but there's times where, you know, you'll, you might 
get two or three bids on something and you'll have two, it'll be pretty close and you'll have one that's just astronomically high. And I, I, I've always sort of referred to that as the, what I call the home run contractor. And I don't know if the mindset's, hey, if they're willing to let me screw them over, then I'll do it. If not, I'll find another sucker. But, you know, I'm fine with paying a, a fair price. Everybody's got to make a living. And you don't need to go out of here and do skilled work for free. And I'm willing to pay for that and willing to pay a premium for it if they give me a good job. But I ain't willing to pay double what the job should cost. You know, out in the business world, I, I see some, a lot of times it's mostly it's younger contractors are just getting started. And you'd like to just set them down sometimes and say, okay, let's just sit down and talk about two or three principles here about business. And, you know, if somebody asked me one time, they said, Travis, what's it take to be successful in business? And I said, well, number one, you need to ask somebody that, that's successful. But if I had to give you my interpretation, you know, if somebody says to be successful in business, you, you just got to work hard and do people right. Well, in my opinion, I shouldn't have to tell somebody to work hard and do people right. I mean, that should be a given. If you, you know, if somebody has to tell you that, well, then I don't think you're mature enough to get in business for yourself yet. But I look at it as a people game. It's, it's, it's relationships. It's who you know. It's customers. It's, you know, you take a customer and turn them into a friend. And, you know, I've got subcontractors that I've used for years. And the type of subcontractor that I want is I want a subcontractor that I don't have to ask for a bid. I've got... I could name you a handful of names and many more. Bill Parker, Jeremiah Wallace, uh, Kevin Garcia, Jason Mathis. I can give you a list of guys that all I do when I've got a job to be done is show them what I'm wanting to do, tell them what my thought pattern is, listen to theirs, we come to a plan, and then I don't think about it again. Because when, you know, when I, the way I look at it on a subcontractor is – if I've got a busy schedule and I've got to make a hundred decisions, if I've got a subcontractor that I know is going to go do a good job, if something goes wrong, they're going to fix it. And they're going to charge me a fair price. They're not going to undercharge it. They're not going to overcharge it. It's going to be fair for them and me. Then they've saved me a lot of time in the fact that that's one decision that I don't have to make. You know, if I'm looking at it as a young businessman, and I'm a contractor, a maintenance guy, whatever, mechanic, uh, uh, mowing grass, whatever it may be, I would hope that I can build a customer base that would treat me that way. And the fact that I'm not worried about Travis, you know, who doing me, he's going to do me a fair job, he's going to charge me a fair price, and I don't have to think about it. That's the kind of contractor I want to be. And sometimes I just like to set people down and shake them a little bit and go, you know, bridges are to be crossed, not burned. And, you know, the guy that come up here the other day that priced that, he can charge whatever he wants to charge. He's his own man. But he will never get another referral or piece of business from me because I just don't feel like he was fair in his pricing and why would I share that with somebody else? So... Anyway, I think it's simple. It comes down to people, and you got to do them fair. You got to do them right. And, you know, if you're good at something, you ain't got to worry about the money. It'll come because people will call on you and they'll continually call on you. But I guess I've got my gun loaded. I went to Lowe's. You saw earlier in this video, I had that concrete in the back of the trailer, had a bunch of lumber in there. And so I asked the late cashier, I said, Is there any way you can, there's a, partial pallet of concrete out there and I said can we just set that pallet up in there and we'll just take a few bags off keep from having to load 24 bags of concrete she said I'll get you somebody out there so I go out there they come out load the concrete slide it up in the back of the trailer and I've got two more buggies of lumber 16 foot stuff a bunch of stuff there that I'm getting ready to load and so they park the tow motor and they're just standing there talking and and I'm over here loading all this lumber in the back of this trailer and they're just standing there giggling to themselves and you know when i'm sitting there loading it it's not that i cared to load it myself but those guys nothing triggered them to say let's go over and help this guy 
Now I know everybody has their deficiencies and I've got more than you can count. But one thing that just drives me up the wall is one, laziness, and two, unwillingness to care about the, other, the guy on the other side of the fence. And you know, I, I'd like to just go over there to those two guys and go, guys, you know what, in 20 years when you're sitting there going, why didn't I ever make it? It's because you're planting dead seed is why. And in that kind of mindset, I hope they, you know, come to a realization and say, you know what, I gotta get it together and I gotta hustle and I gotta try, but who knows. But, you know, Brantley out here on that tractor earlier in this video, as a dad, it's my job to teach him. And I hope I can instill in him a little bit the fact that, hey, that, uh, you know, lead by example. Hopefully he realized the fact that you're supposed to treat people right and you're supposed to go out and do a good job. But I hope I can instill in him some common sense traits that uh, he can go out, function, get along with people and be able to be successful in this world because I'll tell you, it's getting sad in the fact you ain't gonna have to be real great to succeed because it seems like to me, people are getting lazier by the day. I've got a good friend that he's a successful guy, done very, very well, and he's got what you wanna call a right-hand man that's been with him for probably eight or 10 years now. And that guy was a waiter in a restaurant. And my friend went in to eat supper one night and this guy just happened to be his waiter. And from him coming and waiting on him that night, and their correspondence with each other. He's been working with him for the last 10 years and probably his salary is probably quadrupled from what it was waiting tables. And yeah, he was at the right place at the right time, but one, getting along with people and two, effort and the way he waited on him that night changed his whole life. And I guess I just sit back and look at some of these folks and I just say, listen, folks, you wonder why you can't get ahead. You've got to create opportunities. And yes, you got to be at the right place at the right time. But if you're, if you're working and you're trying, you're going to be at more places. And so that guy over an hour time period of waiting on this guy changed his whole life. And so Brantley out here on that tractor, he's, you know, it's, He's driving a tractor now. He's got a lot of learning to do, but hopefully, uh, you know, as parents, we can lead by example and they can watch us and maybe we can give them a few pointers down the road that'll lead them and head them in the right direction. Uh, obviously, money doesn't bring you happiness, but you got to have it to live. And uh, I just feel like if we focus on the people, the other stuff will fall in place. Well, there's your business advice from a hillbilly, so probably not worth much, but hey, I'm thankful we live in a country, and some people will see this in other countries, but uh, I'm pretty partial to America because you got the ability to go out here and try, and you can pave your own path, but that's about going to wrap this one up. Uh, these boys, hopefully, will get a little warmer weather. We've laid off a few days because it has been so cold. I don't want to start my heat and air unit just yet because I don't want to suck it full of dust, but hopefully we can get this drywall finished. Then we will probably put a primer coat on everything. And then I probably go ahead and lay some floors so we can lay some trim. I don't want shoe mold down around their hard surfaces. And then we'll finish painting this baby out. And then we got some porches to build. So that will be a fun one. I, I'll tell you, I think it's sort of a blessing in disguise because that's it, it, it's not a bad porch but i've never built one but i've got four hips that'll go around the corners and where it returns back to the house so that'll be a fun project so i'm thinking of some jigs on how i can cut some of those uh, rafter seats out because of that four inch wide material but it'll be a fun project to try but if you watch this one i appreciate it and we'll catch you on the next one